Ooh. I, it's on the cover of the... Stop. They're like, they're like young yeah. doing one of these. Stomp. Hello. <laughs> stomp. Stomp. Hello. Hi. Hi. Foamthemouth.gif makes me think of. Oh. Yes, that guy. Is it, thank you exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. That's oh, is it? It's from that guy. Oh, oh. Okay. Joan, can I trouble you now that we've started stream to um, brace the base of the TV and rotate it a bit towards me if you can? Oh, no, it's perfect, Critter. Whatever works. Thank yes. you. Much better. This Amazing. order, Gil. Better. Yes, thank you. Hi, Gil. Good. Actually, hello to everybody. Hi. Hello, and thank you for the sub. Ba, 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 ba. What order will the players sit in? It's true. We always change the order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We There's only like to keep you on so your toes. So many configurations, obviously. That's yeah. okay. We'll just um, learn how to cut ourselves in half so that we can further shake it up. <laughs> shake it up. Ah. Shake it up. Ah. <laughs> Welcome back. Listen. Yeah, hi. Oh, I was talking to myself oh. in this seat. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I, I respect that. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, very good. It has been, John. How does it feel? Uh, interesting. Because also, uh, we have a different stream computer. Yes. Different monitor mm -hmm. in front of me. I've got so much space for all, all my stuff. All the activity. It's, it's so much better. I, as we said before the stream, that is, a, that is a sexy monitor. It's very nice. Oh. Muy nice. The bot isn't open, though. <gasps> oh. I will open the bot. No, I forgot to put it in the button, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's like, error, it might edit a text file on your computer. Oh, Are no. you okay? You want to launch this application? Like, I appreciate Windows, but... <laughs> Winboot.exe. You're <laughs> yeah. like, no way. Not clearly not a text file. Anyway, whatever. Oh boy. Yes. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi. It, it's also been a while since we all streamed together. Yeah. It has it been feels. several weeks. Several weeks. Yes. Yeah. Much has happened. It's been a while. Yeah. I had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Scott had a baby. Kate had a show. As a show. Has. I did not have a baby. Sorry, just to be sure? very clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sure. I'm very sure. Thank you, Josh. You sure you were pregante? Pregante. I did. I totally wrote in an adaptation. I had to write pregnant, and I wrote. And you wrote pregnante. I, re I, I definitely wrote, wrote pregnante. I wrote a few times <laughs> yeah. in that show. Like, it just. I've got one note. Featured chat is not currently active on this. Uh... Uh, thank you. Home. Which is fine. I don't yeah. think we have to worry about it right now. But I've made so many other bells and whistles, folks. Yeah, we're Doo -doo. actually going to get a chance to look at them. Yeah. Uh, yeah Loomba's up. Yay! Yay. We, we put that in there, so we have to put <sighs> Loomba in the start of the scene. Hey, session zero for us is also our tech run. <laughs> Yeah. John is sure. quiet. Thank you. Please let us know if there are any other audio Although, uh, tweaks. Uh, audio sounds good and love everyone's hair. Thanks, Whoa. Whoa. That is a Thank note you. I will <laughs> That's a note we're all gonna take, especially John. Well you you take care of it. Though. I actually spend actually more time great. on my hair than most people. I definitely yeah. at this point. Yeah. I mean you can tell I spend literally zero time on my hair. I <laughs> my took hair. a shower and ran out the door this morning and Whoa. I brushed, I did, that's, that's a lie. I did come into the house, brush my hair, get water, and sit down during pre show. Nice. So, yeah, you may, I can't I, you I put the effort, like, well, I, I Ubered. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. how I made it. <laughs> but yeah. Thumbs up. That's how we do. Yeah. Um, I mean, oh my god, Liz, what are you? Oh, oh, I know what you're writing. Never mind. It's, <laughs> what sorry, that's like a lot. Of, yeah. Yeah. That is oh a my lot god. of notes over there. Oh, shiny happy presents. Oh, Arimethius. Shiny happy presents. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Or are we talking about Shiny Happy People, the R.E.M. song? Or are we I, talking I about wrong. Shiny Happy Monsters, which is also the R.E.M. song when they were on Sesame Street? Oh, oh is that true? Oh, that's so cute. They did a version of that, which was Shiny Happy Monsters that's on Sesame really, Street. really, really sweet. <sighs> Too wholesome. I do love when people, and it's, anyway, I love when people go on, say, Sesame Street, Sesame Park, whatever, and just, yeah, the most wholesome versions of themselves. So, folks, this is a session zero, and it's a session zero for the first major campaign we've done in a long while. Yeah. Yeah. I'm honestly, I'm pretty hyped about that. Um, 
this is a game that we have had a look at and we've done a bit of preparation for and by preparation for uh we all rewatched every goddamn moment yeah <laughs> some yeah. of us also dove directly into the comics and the nice. novels Why? Nice. Like like session session I row. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I, we can't be tear bending at this point in the stream. Oh, it'll happen. Yeah, it's fair, honestly. So, I think I'm going to start right off, and I'm just going to ask if one of you could give a very, very brief overview of what this universe is. Yeah, putting you right in there. I can do it if you don't want to. I want to try it. It's a question. Why don't you hold that book it. up? Why don't you show yeah. people? Look at that's, this beautiful book that honestly, happened to hit publish like what less than a month ago. We were yeah. we had the backer PDF or yeah, pre order PDF I, I, or whatever I it was. It. Um, but yeah, we didn't have the real book. We had no idea when it was going to happen, and it so happened to come some out. of us had to get creative. Yeah, we, we had <laughs> no idea. We wanted to have a physical copy, yeah, yeah. so they printed it just before Christmas, and then this came out in January. Well, yeah. Whoa, Aramathius. <laughs> oh, I don't think uh, you're watching the right turn. Yeah, Whoa. wrong avatar. <laughs> Dab a D. <laughs> now that's the crossover I never knew I needed. Uh, um, you gonna give it a shot? You want to, You seem very eager to try? Sure, long ago the four nations lived in harmony and then everything <laughs> changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Uh, only the avatar can master all four elements. And bring Only balance. the Avatar, master of all four elements, can bring balance to could them. stop him. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. Now that's that's only for that universe, though, right? Because only that Avatar vanished. So I'm just yeah. I'm doing a more general version. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Lemon Eater. Um, no, but seriously, please. Uh, yeah, th this is this is set in a universe in which some people have command over some elements, earth, fire, water, and air. Through the use of martial arts. Through the use of martial arts, they can bend or kind of use them. Not everyone has this ability. Um, and there are various nations based around, or nations or groups of people based around these elements as well. And one person in the whole world can master all four elements. They are the avatar and they are none of us. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as the book says, but the Avatar is not the only hero in this world. Oh, Many are called to bring balance where there is disorder and seek justice where there is suffering. Some of these heroes are benders themselves, but others use martial arts, weapon training, or technology to triumph in their amazing adventures and build a better world. These heroes might sometimes stand with the Avatar in times of great trouble, but often they must join with other heroes without the Avatar's guidance to bring balance. <laughs> Sometimes they stand against the avatar. No, no, hang on, no, that's not right. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Heroes, folks. Yeah, question mark. Oh. No, I trademark. Can't. Yeah, DM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, patent pending. Patent pending. Okay. Uh, that's nice. I guess though, one of the things about this game is that there are five separate eras that you can set your game in. Well, technically, I guess you can set it in whenever the hell era you want. Um, but uh, you have the option of playing during. Um, four different avatar reigns, and then of course one where there was an avatar, but he was indisposed. <laughs> uh, indisposed. So we could have gone from the Kyoshi era, uh, the Roku era, the Hundred Years War era, the uh, Ang era, and the Korra era. And um, are there actually stats for the avatar? There are stats for yes. several avatars that are in the book. Yeah. Uh, but it is also made pretty clear that the Avatar isn't meant to be an antagonist uh, because the Avatar would just wreck your shit. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yes. <laughs> John is the Avatar. In... Avatar John. <laughs> but but if you wanted to see which era we have chosen, we can always go to the map. Uh, and then if we have a look... We are setting the first part, or at least we're setting the, the focus of the campaign, not necessarily all of it, but where we are starting is right here in Republic City, Ooh. which means that we are playing in the Korra era. What does that mean? It's, um, so in the... Aang era, there was a little bit of technology, there were coal-powered uh, 
uh, ships. Mm -hmm. um, there were air air balloons, things like that. But the Korra era really pushed forward the industrialization. There are now um, cars, um, trains, mm -hmm. um, airplanes of sorts, just starting to be. But they're also like mechs. They're mechs also super futuristic sorts, yeah. mechs. Lightning power, lightning, lightning zapping guns. There's. It's sort of 20s, 30s technology, but also a little bit of a twist and mm -hmm. well, unique universe. Well, considering yeah. that they have some... People who can just shoot lightning. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, this yes, Air, Erwin, this does mean that airships are on the table. Just for you. And it does mean the war has been over for quite some time. Yes. The the Hundred Year War. Hundred year yes. War. Anyway. Well, the Hundred Year War has been over, and also the uh, the the world is not currently in a state of war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Republic City was in fact founded as like it, it wasn't in existence before um, <clears throat> the like Korra era. Basically, um, it was founded during the uh, end of the Aang era mid to late Aang era. Um, and that was kind of uh, seen as like a, a, an opportunity for the nations to, they elected council mm -hmm. representatives and kind of like UNE sort of thing, UN-esque. Uh -huh. Kung Fu Fenders is asking, <laughs> is this pre or post Earth Kingdom War? It is post. Very specifically, the events of this game happen after the events of the Legend of Korra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's important. I think even after the, at least the comics that have been released so far take place in like the six months after. Like, yeah, it, the, it's supposed to take place after yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So yes, correct, yeah. Yeah, all the way after Korra. I realize I haven't eaten, so I'm gonna grab myself <laughs> something and I'll be back. Sounds good. Now, Ready? like at all today. Yeah, Kate, oh Kate literally ran oh, no. from the theater <laughs> and then sat down at this table about two minutes okay. before we actually went live. So. Uh, we're just happy that she's here now. Oh, if you yeah, haven't, if you haven't seen Avatar: The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra, you don't need to have seen it. Correct. However, we will say that simply by running our game, uh, elements of the show, pretty big elements of the show, are going to be spoiled. Yes. So proceed with your own risk. If it is a show you plan to watch, first of all. It's an excellent show. Would yeah, recommend. Yes. Um, but just be aware of that. It also has been, it's, it's been a show that's been out for quite some time. So. Yeah, <laughs> past that, um, yeah. how dare you spoil me? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Now, beyond that, if, if we point at uh, what we have right below us here, uh, you might be able to get an impression of who and what we've chosen to play because we're getting questions like, are non-bender PCs supported um, and the like? What the fuck? Excuse me. It's my phone. I'm gonna turn it on. I haven't touched a thing. That's okay. I didn't <laughs> understand that. Uh, I tried. <laughs> so what do these symbols mean below your various characters? So, um, I'm gonna just keep talking about stuff and referencing the book here. You just tell me to stop and I will stop. But um, you'll notice in the book that when early on, when they talk about the various eras, they have these little headings for which kingdom we're dealing with. So the heading, the color um, implies which kingdom our characters come from. Now, John is a storyteller. I just gave sort of a nebulous grayish blue, um, but um, my two That's friends my here, <laughs> my two friends here are from the earth kingdom mm -hmm. and my character is from Republic City. Uh, and then the symbols you see in those circles imply earth bending, weapons usage, and air bending. Ooh, the arbiter of balance. I am the arbiter of balance, <laughs> yes. and that actually plays a huge part in this game. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about that. Uh, so yeah, the 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 game itself is very much focused on the idea that being a bender, somebody who can manipulate one of the four elements, doesn't actually put you over the top in terms of player characters. Uh, being trained in a weapon um, or weapon styles or being trained in technology uh, can put you easily on par 
with vendors as well. So it's how the game works. You've all created characters. We're going to get to them in a bit. We have, we, we got a whole lot of things we got to do, but this is a session zero. Mm -hmm. And because it's a session zero, that means that the number one thing that we're going to have to focus on right now is safety. Ah. Now we have our own safety tools. The game suggests the use of the X card. Which is nice. Which is a good idea. We don't. We have our own safety cards. You do not have safety cards, but you do have options. And we'll get to those in a second. Holding up the play card, otherwise known as the green card, means that everything's fine. Doesn't matter how I might look or appear, I am reassuring everybody out of character that I'm perfectly okay and I'm ready to keep playing. The pause card, or the yellow card, means that if I'm holding this up, I need everyone to stop playing and pay attention to me. I have something I need to make clear out of character. Once I put the card down, we can continue playing. The stop card, or the red card, means that I am not okay. I can't keep playing. The game will pause at that point, and we'll probably go to a be right back screen if that is the case. And we won't continue playing until we have all decided that we are okay to keep playing. The use of the cards is never an indication of a weakness or of an inability. Uh, it is instead a method for us to make sure that we can very clearly communicate to each other, this is what I need right now. Or no matter what you might think, this is actually what's going on. It's a very deliberate thing. We don't joke around with these cards. Mm -hmm. If these cards are being held up, we make a point of making sure that we do this. This is an extended one because it's mm -hmm. our session zero. Very good. Uh, these are actually the cards that we have spent a, a <coughs> bunch of time designing the look of the cards, the feel of the cards. We're getting very close to the point where we can actually release the cards. As asked in chat by Zablica. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Absolutely, they're going to be available through drive through. We have, in fact, um, Oh, is the bot not reacting to Discord? Damn. That's the most important one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be down below if you're watching on Twitch or on YouTube or listening to us on podcasts. There Try again. Yeah, and cut in. In the uh, doobly-doo. In the doobly-doo. Yeah, the, the, the bot was disconnected hey, yeah. doing the backup. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Poor um, timing. So, um, but yes, we are we are planning to release these for purchase at cost or like two cents above cost, whatever our minimum threshold mm -hmm. is to be able to sell them. Um, and there's also currently on our website rpgclinic.com backslash safety. It's, it's a slash. It's not a backslash. Slash. I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, You're not R the only one who makes rpgclinic.com slash safety. Mm -hmm. uh, at the bottom, if you scroll all the way down, there are print, print at home PDFs for you and uh, emoji you can use on your Discord server or other places you can use custom just mm. emoji. You want to slip them into Uno? Yeah. Uno Reverso. Play! Play on, baby. <laughs> uh, we will have actually multiple versions. The kind that we got, we didn't get through drive through cards. The reason being that shipping to Canada from drive through cards is ridiculous. Uh, it's perfect for our American friends, but for everyone else, we have um, cards through uh, make playing cards, uh, and those are plastic, so they will hold up a little better, uh, especially if you're going to use them in your LARPs. Yeah, which is specific in a LARP Whoa. when you don't have pockets. So you can spill all the meat on them you want. Yeah, that too, though, actually. <laughs> Fair, I guess. I like it, I like it. Dude, I just, all I oh, saw no. was you just like... Whoa. You have two layers of safety, okay? Double safety. Now, yeah. we have these cards. Yeah. The audience doesn't. But if you are present for one of our Twitch streams, that doesn't mean you don't have options. If you are here and you are experiencing a safety uh, crisis, the one thing you can do is you can always whisper RPG Clinic, in which case, the four of us will see it, it will come up, we see the chat on screen. I just totally passed my hand directly in front of your camera. Um, <laughs> the chat is, is right next to us here. Uh, you can also whisper one of our moderators. Right now, we have Aragorn and Kung Fu Fenris who are in. Uh, she who knows 10,000 things, which actually now comes around to being appropriate. Yes. Uh, and right. Bleeds the Light Invincible 
are here. Um, so, oh, we gotta, yeah, we gotta add Kung Fu Fenris into the... Oh, oh I haven't updated that. I think we but... did, and then we we restored it from a backup. Mm. Uh, Emoji-based safety tools for the chat. So there's a reason we don't do this. Um, there's a few, actually, but the main one is that we we can't control the usage of the emoji and we have to treat every instance of it as if it's the real thing. And there, the audience is something that we can't control because you can show up and just use the emoji right away. Uh, the other thing is that we play for our game mm -hmm. and if you're experiencing an issue, we care, but we also can't accommodate everybody. Mm -hmm. And if we had to stop every time anybody watching had an issue, uh, then that could potentially be too unwieldy for us. So this is why we make sure to make sure that the audience knows they could whisper us, but you can always also leave chat or leave the stream. We don't want you to, but we'd rather that you prioritize your own mental health. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. Thank yeah. you, John. So in terms of other safety though, we do have lines and veils. Another thing that the game recommends that you use, lines are things that we don't want to see in the game at all. They do not happen. Veils are things that can happen in the game, but we won't go into detail or we won't overly focus on them. So, do you want to give us some examples of some lines that we have in this game? Uh, yep, sexual assault is a line in this game. Yep. <laughs> and it just always is on RPG Clinic in all of our, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of our games, yep. yes, it just, up. it just won't down. happen. Yep. What else we have? Uh, body horror. Mm hmm that's right. Mine kind of it has toast. become an RPG clinic. It has become so. a line, but it's it's uh, violence against non-combatant animals mm -hmm. is the best way that I've been able yeah. To say nice. it. yeah 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 Clear. so an animal that is defenseless or innocent mm -hmm. can't be subject to violence in our games. Um, that doesn't mean that they can't be like captured, but captured might look like a sack pulled around them and then cinched closed, as opposed to like beating somebody yeah. yeah so we don't do that either um excessive gore yep is something that we have uh that we have said is more that's really more of a no excessive gore is a line it's a line yeah yeah excessive gore because is a line. because of the word excessive I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and um along the same lines also excessive uh violence and uh explicit sex uh we can't do those also because we're on twitch yeah if it violates the terms of service we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Now, what about some veils that we got going on here? Uh, I veiled in the last few games explicitly. I veiled um, like descriptions of claustrophobic situations, overly kind of descriptive ones. Mm -hmm. that's something that's a per that's for me. I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm sure we we veil that. sexual encounters. Yes, we do. Yeah, right. We'll, yeah. we go up to a certain point and then we will say that it happens but we again we won't go explicitly into it because, we fade to black yeah, yeah we, we fade oh. to black it's a, it's a very different stream if we were just like okay and, and probably and not on twitch get the mannequins <laughs> <laughs> oh that's what the drawings are for they're very non-clear i mean extremely clear so this does bring up something that yeah. we should talk about though mm. because in the universe of Avatar The Last Airbender, there is, uh, this show is, of course, one that was produced by Nickelodeon, and it was originally designed for a wide audience age range. Mm -hmm. What about us? <gasps> what about us? <laughs> so our streams are going to be at least PG-13, if not yeah. on M for Mature. I don't know. Depends what country you're in and how, how much they care about, one you know. Per stream. Yeah, swears <laughs> or the implication of sex existing. Sex uh, exists in our universe. Mm -hmm. It's usually... Uh, just yeah. The, look, the table in front of you is main, and there are those who are horny on it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's yeah. you in the chat, too. It's your themes, yeah. Yeah, they're visited. Yeah, we are not intending to follow the same level of, uh, of shall we say, uh, ESRB, Peggy, uh, television ratings as what we can see here in Avatar Peggy. Yeah, no, I, I'm just, I, I, I can hear Peggy 18 in my head. Like, I yeah. can hear it in my head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cellular mitosis is not ruled out. Oh, uh, hot. It's happening right in front of you right now. Oh, shit. Live on stream <laughs> in full view. <laughs> 
Oh my god, he's my so whole body, just mitosis. <laughs> where, do you, where do you think my twin came from? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just giving the lines and bales that we had prepared for um, Disconcordia. Oh, great. Uh, so I'm going to throw out um, that uh, hate speech was something that we veiled, and I think that's something that we will continue to. It's just not something that we're interested in exploring. I think there there may be stories where we're like, damn you, Benders, you have all the powers, or you non-Benders are so weak. But I don't think we're going to get into explicit... Slurs situations of slurs. Things. Well, we yeah. certainly won't be using any hate speech that applies to the real world. No, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, violence against young children, I think that falls into the same umbrella as innocent animals. Um, uh, it can, that, the only thing that we can change a little bit there is yeah. that if there's like an event like war yeah, or war a cataclysmic event can affect everyone. Everyone is suffering everyone. in the country, including But that's children. that's kind yeah. of a different thing. Yeah. I, that it goes for animals as well. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, we flooded the dam. There's probably going to be some fish that aren't going to be so happy, but mm. we're not going to specifically focus on that. Yeah. No. We have a... Um, the little doll floating in the ocean. <sighs> nice. God damn. We have, a, we have a veil for the channel rather than the game, which is real world politics. Yeah. If you've been on the channel long enough, you'll know we, we don't want to discuss that here but like it's veiled in the sense that yeah. things come up but, they, but exactly it's not what the games are but in this case we are very much in a fictional world as opposed to with changeling where we were in our, our own city this, correct yeah, our yeah, world. yeah this world yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. but no no yeah for sure are there any other safety things that we need to be aware of here um, you, you mentioned it in the sense that this is a, we, we may deal with slightly more mature sexual themes than say a Nickelodeon show does, but I think it's also probably important to mention characters are the age of consent. Yeah. If a character is getting involved in exactly. any kind of romantic or sexual situation, uh, this is our disclaimer right now. They're old enough to make their own uh, fully conscientious decisions. Yeah, we won't be um, looking. We won't be exploring themes that would uh, violate that. Yeah. Good. Great. Oh, that's a nice way of putting it, Eric. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Like there Good are people who come in and they they're just like, "Did you hear about this thing?" And I'm like, "I might absolutely agree with you. Just no, we're not talking not about right. it." Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's. I think that was it for. I mean, safety-related I think yeah. so, yeah. Obviously, if anything comes up, we do have our cards. And if there was ever a moment where we needed to discuss something, that would be a great use for either the pause card or, in fact, the stop card, which I will not raise because I don't feel the need to right now. Uh, great. So with safety out of the way, um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about before we dive into uh, our characters and what we're going to be doing and our, like the themes that we want to do. Um, is that there's a couple of things that the book assumes and i just wanted to make sure that we went over that mm. uh, one of them is that experience which they call growth is something that you earn individually i don't want to do that <laughs> uh, i i'm on a real kick <laughs> for I this say play i'm play down on. for that yeah, i'm on a real kick for this uh i don't like dividing experience among players now the thing is in this system which is Powered by the Apocalypse, it's a, it's a hack, but it, it is based on Powered by the Apocalypse, um, that there are elements of your playbook which will, like, if you do this, mark growth. And that is intended to show that your character is growing. Problem is that doing this punishes people who support others in their role-playing without focusing on themselves. For instance, one of the ways in which you mark growth is if your balance is fully centered. But then... To me, that means that you have an incentive to make sure that you are always in balance, perhaps to the detriment of the story mm -hmm. or the role play. Mm -hmm. Or you might want to force another player off balance or on balance, and then it affects their experience. Like, that sucks. So instead, instead of once you have marked four growth, you now have the ability to advance, uh, once you collectively have marked 12 growth all of you will advance perfect perfect and you'll still do the same thing at the end of the sessions we'll still ask the same questions that will be the growth questions and all that but then there's less of a pressure to be oh wow i happen to have four more growth than everyone else at the table because that's just how the cookie crumbles mm -hmm. 
So that's the first thing. Great. Any questions about that? Any any concerns we want to throw out there? I mean, just just I assume that we will also keep a watch on that to make sure that you know if twelve growth happens every four streams, every two streams, every half a stream. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if if we're advancing too quickly or too slowly, yeah, that we can adjust that as a necessary. Absolutely, okay. especially because this game makes it quite clear that once you hit your cap, and there is a cap, yeah. Your character is close to retirement. So knowing that we can try to play around it a little bit, obviously, once we have hit the cap, it's not an instant and gone, but uh, we we don't want to make sure that we hit the cap in like five sessions. Yeah. I think we'd have to work pretty hard for that, but <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just hulk out, yeah. I should point out yeah. though that if we hit growth in the middle of a session, which is possible, you will get the chance to advance immediately. Nice. That the game is very explicit about that. Cool. And just to be just to be clear, like we have on our playbooks individual moments of like if this happens, mark growth. So we would, but that would go into our communal pot. It goes kind in your of communal thing. pot. Okay, cool. So, so we'll have some way of have... tracking that. Yep. Yeah. We'll abs we absolutely will. Um and the advantage to that then is also if you have a cool cathartic moment that lets you mark growth, maybe everybody gets to have a cool Yay. Thing. Um, but we can also make sure that it focuses on, if it's your cool moment, then maybe we'll focus on what you get out of it right away. And then everyone else can just be cool a little bit later on. So that's the first thing. The second thing is about death. In this game, uh, death is in fact something that should be only, like it's very clear that it's only negotiated and it also makes it very clear that the characters are not killers and I wanted to raise that because I don't want to force you to not be a killer mm -hmm. a growth bar on screen would be cool that's very possible uh, Arethius we're going to save that question we're going to get to it in just a second yeah just because I want to yeah, yeah that's a good question but yeah. we'll so my suggestion is that you still can only kill a character on purpose, right? I'm never going to have a moment where I'm like, surprise, somebody's Whoops. dead. And it's because you happen to roll your dice and it fell this way. If I may share with the chat, that <laughs> has <laughs> happened to me in an RPG with Actually, multiple people. times. Uh, okay, anyway, at least once. <laughs> and it, it feels bad. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it feels bad. If, you, if you're like, oh, shoot, can I hold back and you're like, Blade's already through the dude. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's bad news. It depends on the, what you're oh, doing. It depends on now, what you're If yeah. you say, oh, I'm there's a ship in the middle of the ocean and I'm going to set its fuel reserves on fire so that it explodes, I might be like, some people might die here and you're just gonna have to deal with it. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but I do want to say that uh, the safety exists but it isn't automatically on forever. Mm. You will have the opportunity, if you choose, to take an enemy out. Just understand that that also has story implications as well. Right. Um, the game does allow for this, but I wanted to make sure that you knew that I am not intending to, for it to be this, like, because in, in Avatar, it is a critical moment. Aang is like, I don't take lives. Now, you know, I, I insist I that there's agree, certain moments yeah. where it's like, you absolutely have killed a lot of people, but whatever. <laughs> the number of times I like watch something on screen, I'm like, no, they're dead. They're that absolutely dead. dead. That yeah, guy's yeah, dead yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you have the opportunity, but in this particular case, I will make sure that you know if an action that you take has a chance of killing someone, or you must be explicit in your saying, I am going to do this and it could potentially result in a death. This also unlocks that for me. Mm -hmm. So if there is a situation where your character uh, would have a reasonable chance of being killed, you'll know. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because throughout, uh, people get captured a lot in, in these two shows. And that is still absolutely a thing. Like if you lose a fight, you're probably not automatically dead. Um, the game's not that deadly. But if you're like, in a final fight with somebody who you previously threatened to kill, they might be like, "Yeah, I, I'll, I, I have to kill this person. It's for my own, my own good." So it's just something for us to keep. So Arimetheus is asked, 
Related question to likelihood of death, how cartoon are the physics going to go? <laughs> what do you want? I, I love where the show exists in terms of it feeling um, it feeling almost exalted in terms mm. of its, uh, not in terms of its level of violence, but in terms of its level of cartooniness or over the topness. People can leap, you know, over like off a building and like leap way further than a normal human could and they can do all sorts of cool shit with their martial arts and whatever that's great mm -hmm. i don't think we're going to be climbing sheer glass walls with our fingertips i mean you have uh, actually i suppose you could actually <laughs> yeah well that's exactly it because because we have the bending available to us uh, I feel like, yeah, my instinct is to go with the show in that, yeah, if you jump off of a building and you don't have air bending, uh, or some other bending to like rescue you mm -hmm. and you don't try to like hook into the side of the building or whatever, you just fall, yeah. physics exists. Yes, yeah. But. You're way more likely to survive a three-story fall in this game. Yeah. yeah. I'll put you it that way. a lot like, more tools. In, yes. I mean, like, it's something as simple as, like, I take my sword and I jab it into the side of the wall and that slows me down just enough so that I yeah. don't break every bone in my body yeah. oh, is great. totally legit. Love that. Um, you, you see an awful lot of this where if an airbender is falling, they gain consciousness just in time to throw a little blast of air below them so that they don't completely splatter. Mm -hmm. So, like, you'll see that. Um, we also, like, look, the physics have to be cartoony because I also really don't want to get into the whole, like, um, actually, if you went that fast, it would just velocity. blow yeah. all of the air, I'm like, your skin would just swallow. Yeah. twist off your yeah. body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, though, like, you know, when you punch someone, they aren't going to, like, fly into the sun. Right, it's not that level of enemy. Yeah, but yeah, they might it's fly about one back punch further, man, yeah. Like they, they might fly back like several steps. Well, yeah, it's the difference between punching someone and and having them fly back against the wall versus punching someone and then going, "Fuck, I broke my knuckle. Oh, oh my god, I need three oh. days to rest yeah, my hand." Yeah. Like you know, it's it's like that sweet spot. <laughs> cool. We actually discussed this before stream, um, and I'm going to bring it up here briefly. Uh, in terms of, there's an awful lot of. Uh, casual violence in these shows where people will like slug each other in the oh, arm yeah, yeah. or that they'll like bend against each other in, in random places like even if it's just to make somebody slip uh, or just to to sort of like hey they argue a little bit even though they're allies and we just want lots of violence against cabbages that is very true yes. uh, there there may Bastards. indeed be some uh, cabbage fatalities uh, in this game, we'll, we'll have to see. Cabology. Actually, the whole campaign is just Cabbage's Revenge. The big bad is just, a, just giant a giant cabbage. One <laughs> sentient cabbage, yeah. yeah. It's like a beholder, but it's a Hello, cabbage. Morgan. So, yeah. the thing is, I think that as long as we understand, I, th I personally am fine with this level of like cartoon violence as long as it's never in the context of like a domestic dispute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As long as it, as long as it's not violence because you are genuinely intending to do somebody harm, then that's fine. Because it's sort of like if you are if you train with a bunch of people in like combat a lot, and then you just start being like, well, we're used to throwing punches at each other because we spar a lot. Yeah. Then these sorts of things happen, and I don't have a problem with it, as long as it's never done in a context of like. Uh, trying to really smack the crap out of people. No, that's, yeah, that would be problematic, and I think we would flag that. <laughs> Unless you decided to face off against each other, which is yeah. possible. And the game actually does have mechanics for that, so. Uh, cactus juice is the quenchiest. That is, that is absolutely true. Uh, okay, so. Can, can I quickly just yeah. jump in? There was that other question from Aramithis about multiple PCs over the length of yeah, the campaign. Let's, let's throw that up there. Just because I think that'll be quick-ish to answer. Yeah. It might, you want to read it that out? Might yeah, the way to given work. that there's a cap and this is a long-term campaign, are you planning on having multiple characters per player over the course of the campaign? Sorry if, I, if it yeah. was answered before. It has not been. <laughs> so, what are your feelings on that? TBD. Yeah, 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 I TBD. think it's a big old it's a big old TBD. <laughs> I think um, it, yeah. We haven't set a set length for this campaign, nor have we set 
a length for how long we're going to be playing this game in particular. We're gonna be kind of feeling it out as we go to see mm. how we enjoy the system and how we enjoy uh, the setting and, and all of that. So maybe, <laughs> maybe not. So I, I do think that the, the intention on my part, for instance, as a baseline is uh, character retirement will be a thing if we cap out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are ways for you to, if you cap out, you t you keep your character, but you take another playbook, mm -hmm. which sort of resets your progress a little bit, and I think that's fine. And also, if you choose to do that for story reasons, I think that's yeah, also that's fine. Cool um, but uh, what I will also say is that we have other games that we are interested in playing, so it really comes down to what do we want to do? And if we start playing this and we're like, we want to keep this campaign going for three years, I think we won't be able to keep all three of these characters. But there is something interesting about this system. The level of the difference between a character at the beginning and a character at the end, there isn't a huge difference because of the way that the, this game treats bending or combat skill. There aren't individual stats or moves for bending in the way that you might expect a hard magic system from like D&D &D or the like. Uh, for instance, you don't have to like rank up in uh, octopus form all the time, um, although it does exist in the game, but it's right. not a, like you don't have to rank up in every individual thing that you can do as a bender. Mm -hmm. So changing out a character for another character, I think is still completely legit. Whether we hand out extra advancements I think we'll we'll see. Yeah, um, we'll see how it feels because I don't want somebody to kind of say, okay, well, my character left or died, and I'll make a new character. Only my character feels entirely useless compared to everyone else. But I don't think the system's going to feel that way. It's not. It's honestly a. It, it feels to me like someone who's taken max advancement doesn't. It probably, yeah. It's probably not that much stronger than. Yeah, it, gives you, it gives yeah. you more options yeah. to choose from, which is just more choice and, paralysis. And more, yeah, and more stats for sure, yeah, but like yeah. not a huge amount. It's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. One thing I'd like to point out, just as we're talking about um, abilities, is that everyone starts with uh, nine basic moves that everyone gets um, in the context of in combat. the context of combat. Um, you can strike, you can pressure, you can smash, ready, retaliate, seize a position, test balance, bolster, hinder, or commit. All of these things, they don't tell you like, oh, you use your air bedding to do them. They're just like, oh no, you're challenging and engage foe's balance. And whether you do that, I guess that one's usually through talking, but whatever, if you're striking yeah. someone, whether you do that with your sword or your air bending or with your earth bending, that's mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. You roll the same number of dice, you have the same bonuses, plus minus whatever your relevant stat is. And everyone has the same stat array. Mm -hmm. It's just in different places. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. I really love that. Mm -hmm. That like, yeah, it's not like, oh yeah, well, if you're a bender, you know, you have these 50 cool moves. And if you're a sword fighter, <laughs> you're okay. It's not like first level D&D. &D. I don't know how it is in fifth, but how first level D&D &D used to be where like, Fighters were OP and wizards suck, and then as you went on, it just did that. That's this. correct. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Anyone have any extra XP to pass around? <laughs> <laughs> so Powered by the Apocalypse games are designed around like the original like Apocalypse world and then also the kind of the famous ones that came after with like Dungeon World um, are not really designed for characters to spend a ton of time like and a ton of like growth. It doesn't really do the same thing like in D&D where it's like your character can go from level 1 to level 20 or even level 30 depending on which uh, edition of the game you're playing. Um, in this particular case it's your character gets stronger but not to such a apocalyptic degree. Weird, because it's powerful. I was gonna say, good. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Great question. It is a great question. And if you have any other questions, please throw them out there. We, we want, this session zero is for us, but it's also for you. And of course, if you're watching this on VOD, you can always just join our Discord and ask us there. There you go. Or comment on the video. Yeah. We, we get those. But yeah, join our Discord and you can ask lots of questions. <laughs> Not wait like, a week between responses. <laughs> Get one heart on your comment. Yep. <laughs> uh, mostly a joke. <laughs> cool. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
beyond all that, are there any other things that I wanted to make mention of in terms of like the rules? Uh, Ivana, that's gonna lead right into our character discussion. If we're getting into which we'll be yeah. which we'll get getting into, into very shortly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, why don't we get into that? We can come back. Hooray! So, uh, the green. Um, so, Ervana, you did miss this earlier. Kate, you wanna? Uh, yeah. So the the background color says that it's um, where we're from. Uh, these two folks are from the Earth Kingdom. My character is from Republic City, which means that we are playing in the Korra era. Mm -hmm. um, John is the master of balance, as the others said, because he's a storyteller. Um, Elizabeth has earth bending. Scott uses weapons. That's what that symbol stands for. And I will be using air bending. There's also a symbol out there for technology, but uh, yeah, the dice those are the dice? they yeah. are. Well, <laughs> these are the dice. It's a gear. Yeah, it's a little yeah. Gear. You probably can't see it at all, but <laughs> it's, it's a that symbol. It's yeah, a boomerang. We'll see that. Can't see that. Right. But you're right. It is a boomerang. Oh, boomerang. Yeah, no, boomerang. Too blurry. Okay, I tried. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, Scott's Scott's symbol is a boomerang. My symbol are the two koi fish. Mm -hmm. Fish. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah. Do you want to reveal your characters at this point? Oh my god. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh hell, who's starting? Mm -hmm. That's it? That's yeah. it? You want to start? Work your way down. Oh, you're you want to introduce? Okay, I can start. Yay. Um, how much, how much are we going to be revealing today, folks? Uh, we're not going to go like into every little nook and cranny. We obviously are going to have... To uh, I've asked all of the players to have at least one secret. I don't think they've come up with them yet, or at least they haven't told me what it is. Or we're keeping them from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not allowed. I'm the one who not have secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. From uh, the so we're not going to get into like full, full, full uh, stuff. But yeah, we can do some some brief looks. Uh, is there a dash between Young and Sue? Uh, I think so. That's what I wrote. Yes, but right. I, I will fix that. Cool. Thank you. Unless you want to go into studio mode and start clicking around. I do. And say, nice. Uh, if you scroll down to P1 scene, and then PC1 card name. Uh, except be... it should be P2 because it's Scott. Hello. So, uh, wrong scene. P2 scene. PC2. There we go. And then put the hyphen. Oh, thanks, guys. That's so kind. There we go. It was never an issue. Never uh, a problem. No, that's what session zero is for. Exactly. It's... Discovering things. Yeah. Um, okay. Like, yeah, oh, like, sorry. Well, no, I was just going to say, like, yeah, in terms of what we're revealing, yeah, like playbook. What is the playbook about? Are we what talking fighting styles? Yeah, hell yeah. Talking a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Give us an intro. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, my character's name is Dawn. She is an earthbender. Yeah, she, her. She's an earthbender from um, uh, who is raised in Republic City. Uh, her fighting style is sand bending, and her playbook is the icon, which basically means that she belongs to some kind of order, um, and she is a very important part of this this tradition. And she has a number of burdens and responsibilities uh, that she needs to adhere to to be uh, a proper member of this order. And we'll go into more details about the the really cool stuff that John and I have figured out uh, later. Mm -hmm. Scott? Nice, yeah. Um, so I'm playing, as you can see there, Young Su, he, him, uh, from originally from a small village in the Earth Kingdom. I think I called it An Andong. I, know, I wrote it down somewhere. Um, I, my playbook is The Hammer. The Hammer uh, and, and Young Su's uh, uh, struggle in life is about deciding how to apply force to solve problems versus what problems can't be solved by the excessive use of force. Uh, he is seeking to exile his enemy, his adversary, his you know, rival, if you will, and he's come to Republic City for that. Uh, as it says there, uh, as well, I'm playing a weapons specialist, and Yang Su is trained in the use of the three-section staff, which I think is pretty interesting, because that is not something you see every day. 
did I? Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah. Usually it's going. I'll, uh, I'll be playing Bao. I haven't fully settled on pronouns, but for now I'm going to say they, them. Um, uh, airbender, as established. Um, fighting style would be deflect and divert, um, which isn't like an officially listed one, so we're still going to refine that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, uh, Bao is a rogue, um, which unlike the D&D one, isn't about backstab! Uh, it's... Um, about finding the balance. So this is one of the things that I used to choose my playbook was the two balances. And so this is the balance between friendship and survival. And so they struggle with, um, yeah, things like bad habits of breaking the law or skirting the law, things like that, that they use to survive that maybe are less good for keeping friends around. Yeah. Um, yeah. But are also like craving that Craving friendship that as well. friendship yeah, as yeah, well, yeah. yeah, exactly. Figuring out, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've yeah, been talking a little bit. We might as well get into this now. One of the key uh, mechanics in this game is balance. So each character has two uh, principles that they are torn between. Liz, what are yours? Uh, role and freedom. Scott? Force and care. Friendship and survival. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about this that I find interesting is that the the struggle in this game comes not just from physical struggle, but also the ability for the player characters and the non-player characters to um, call out and affect each other's balances. Um, and the idea is that going too far over on one end could lead to you being able to call upon that principle to help you but it also means that you're precariously close to losing your balance. And losing your balance is a little bit like limit breaking in Exalted. What happens when you lose your balance? Uh, you have to, you, ha you might indulge that principle to an excessive degree. You might, uh, you might hurt someone emotionally or physically. Uh, I'm thinking of someone like Azula who definitely has lost her balance at many points in the series and, and hurt, strikes out and hurts people. Uh, I'm sure there's something else there, right? Eh? Yeah, so the, the point forms are give in or submit to your opposition, oh. lose control of yourself in a destructive and harmful way, or take an extreme action in line with the principle, then flee. Um, those are sort of the examples uh, that you're supposed to sort of choose from to start as baseline. Mm. But yeah, something that is that is definitely going to not be particularly constructive for your character in that moment, right? <laughs> Correct, Arabana, yeah. yeah. But, but fair, yeah. And the thing is, if we if we look at at the balance state, um, it is possible for someone to be oh, put over no, too far, no. <laughs> of course, <it's> ah! <laughs> um, to the point where they are really only focused on one of their principles. Uh, but then it could just as easily be the other way. Now the issue with this is that if you lose your balance, uh, bad stuff can happen. However, lose your balance enough over to one side and you may resolve your imbalance, this, this situation by choosing one of your principles over the other. So at some point it's possible that Scott may decide that uh, your character really chooses force over uh, care. As like a principle to base their life around. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that's the case, the character is in a, in a position where you are going to have to either select a new playbook or retire because you've resolved that inner conflict within yourself. Can I just say, I think it's really fascinating and I'm sure there are other games, in, in fact, that we've even approached that have dealt with this before, but um, you know, a playbook could be likened to a class selection. In many other games, there are classes, and, and classes generally relate to like your profession or the type of fighting you do, or it, it's the things that you do or are trained in. Whereas that's you know covered by training here. The a playbook is unique in Avatar Legends. You can't have more than one uh, of a playbook at the table 
because that person's journey is on their character sheet. It's not their training that's on your sheet. Mm -hmm. It's what you're struggling with. It's the emotional journey of your character. I think that's fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah, like you could be an airbending icon. You could be like, yes, it's, exactly. it's, it's not like It's not all tied together. Yeah. Um, and that way, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah like you could have a team of all airbenders if you wanted to right. or whatever. Um, yeah, it's specifically these, these um, balances that are unique. Mm -hmm. Because each yeah. character, like each kind of hero is is struggling with a different thing, you know? And especially like within the show, that those struggles lead to them having to make hard choices, but then eventually, yeah, resolving and becoming the person they want to be, the hero they want to be, or for some people, perhaps the villain <laughs> that they want to be, perhaps. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I, I think it also says a lot about, like, yeah, this is like, you know, thematic or whatever, but I think it also just says a lot about the universe in the sense that growing up requires you to struggle with different ideals, things that might be easy, things that might be difficult. And it's not always about making the right choice. Sometimes it's just about making the choice that's right for you. And I think that's, again. Do you think that's realistic? Because I never grew up, so I don't really know. <laughs> John is the the perpetual child. Yeah, 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 that's your playbook, right? I think we have that down somewhere for you. Now your characters yeah. are going to be going through these these emotional questions, right? Balance is important, and you are allowed to uh, try to manipulate not only mm -hmm. uh, NPCs but each other in terms of your balances as well. You can use uh, certain moves, and we're going to get to what moves are in a second, uh, in order to try and either bring somebody closer to center or possibly push somebody further over onto the edge. So uh, that is a thing. So it's sort of an interesting thing that in combat, for instance, uh, you can win through combat by taking somebody out, but you can also win by making somebody lose their balance. Because if they lose their balance, they can no longer effectively fight. I feel like Zuko gets fucked multiple, so to speak, multiple times in, in Airbender because he's he, it's not that he's bad, it's just that he's off balance. And As, people poke him, you know? So um, at the end of season two, mm. Azula pushes Zuko off balance, even though he's basically, his life is sorted. He's happy. And then Azula's like, but I'm calling upon your principle of, in this particular case, we could probably say it's something like honor, mm. right? <laughs> of being like, well, you can restore your honor and yeah. honor is important. Honor. And that's what causes him to do a horrible thing, which is to turn his back on his uncle. Right. It's very sad. Of course, anybody who turns their back on Iroh, what the fuck? They will get okay. a big hug. He's just <laughs> a confused teenager. He is a confused teenager. But 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 just like, yeah. again, pointing at the show and being like, that, that's an example of this actually existing in the fiction. Now, your characters also have fatigue. Yes. Uh, I see that Oops. Bao already has some fatigue. Oh shit, Bao, no. Clear me, clear me up. Oh shit! Thank Thank you. Uh, so, fatigue is something that shows just as you go through this whole mess of a game. Uh, <laughs> as you go through the game, you will be accumulating fatigue. Fatigue is sometimes inflicted on you, like if somebody is attacking you. Typically, at first, you take fatigue, but it is also something that if you take an action that I determine would take a little bit out of you, then you will mark fatigue for that, and then you heal fatigue by resting essentially. Uh, take enough fatigue like Kate is doing right here. Oh, I'm so fatigued. <laughs> and then if you have taken too much fatigue, you can't take actions that would cost you fatigue. Yeah. Also, if anything is inflicted upon you that would cause fatigue, instead of taking fatigue, you will take a condition instead. There are five conditions. You want to list yep. those off? I have them here. These are emotional conditions, afraid, angry, guilty, insecure, and troubled. I like, Which is nice. I like I, I'm just waiting for the first time that one of you gets troubled. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of this, John. It's going to be a lot of that. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and if you do end up, um, if you do end up with all five of your conditions marked, and then you have to take a sixth, you are taken out. That could mean that you're injured. It could mean that you 
just no longer have the ability to fight. Uh, but again, I won't kill you unless I've told you previously oh, that it, it is on the table. Right. Uh, also, as long as you have some of these conditions, it becomes harder for you to do certain things. Um, for instance, if you're angry, what does that mean? Uh, you get a minus two penalty to guiding and comforting others, as well as assessing a situation, which makes sense. It, it's hard if you're if you're furious with yourself or the world, you're not going to have a lot of success talking someone else down or looking around you at the world. I'm angry with myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <sighs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Erevan is. I mean, interestingly enough, Erevan, I. It's kind of a mechanic in the game. I mean, it's not literally called Cup of Jasmine Tea, although maybe it should be, uh, which is great. This game is all about what it calls the conversation and the fiction. As we play and we describe what our characters say and do, if something happens that triggers a move, then if that move has its outcome in doubt and that outcome is interesting, uh, then at that point, the players will be asked to roll potentially dice. Not all moves involve rolling, some of them don't, but it does trigger some of the mechanics of the game itself. Mm -hmm. And the important thing to note is that everything must make sense in terms of the fiction. So if you're describing your bending, so uh, Liz, your character is uh, an earthbender, mm -hmm. specifically a sandbender. Yeah. Um, so if you were in a place where you were in a desert, for instance, no problem. Yeah. Right? But would you be able to earthbend if you were surrounded by, say, metal? No, because I am not a metal bender. Damn. So I would not be. Not yet. Should have taken it. Not curtain, yet. Right? It is possible, <laughs> potentially, for you to learn. But um, if you describe an action and it makes plausible sense in the fiction, then I can let it go. If you say like, well, I carried some earth with me, like I have a, maybe you create like a little rock bracelet. Yeah. So you'll have at least that much earth. But if you want to do something like, well, I'm going to use that little bit of rock bracelet that I've got so that I can like send a, a like basically just a, a chunk of rock punk and hit somebody in the forehead with it. Sure, that makes sense in terms of the fiction. But I can't, like, make a wall with it or anything. Right, like that. because it no longer does. Yeah, yeah. Because the game doesn't specifically have, like, a description of this is how earth bending works. It's very free flowing. I see uh, everyone's the mob boss of Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just for the earth bending guys. Oh no, they took a swim. Uh oh. <laughs> Sploosh. Yeah. Maybe they could water bend to get out of there. Uh oh. It's a kind mob boss. Yeah. So, on your playbooks, do you actually have a list of what the basic moves are? Yes. Well, Not there, but yes, we do. Sheets. Yes, we do. Which the book comes with. Sorry, I'm just going to shout out this book. I'm so thrilled. Not only. Is it very pretty and has beautiful snippets of art she opens to from like the, the genocide game. page? Yeah, like a really boring page. <laughs> Shit run. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? But... She did. She opened it to the genocide of the airbenders. Page. Oh my <laughs> god. Um, but at the very back, I believe, and also they have uh, downloadable things online. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. Maybe it's just online. No. Nope. Nope. There's reference sheets at the very back of the book. Little two pages, just two pages, but it's literally all you need. Yeah. It's so good. I like I'm the so fact thrilled. that they provide the PDFs, but they provide also printer-friendly versions, yes. so that it doesn't Fewer have colors. like the background yeah, and the yeah, colors, yeah. which is just like because sometimes printing it out where you also have the background. Woof. Yeah, because there's like yeah. very pretty patterns and stuff <laughs> on the go. uh, <laughs> on the PDF versions, but the printer-friendly ones are much nicer. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> yeah. The so what are the moves? Oh, yes, basic moves. Yeah. Uh, well, you discuss this. I'm actually going to go pee. Oh, okay. Because I got to pee. I'm no so sorry. No problem. Bye-bye. Buddies. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> we all have them. <laughs> you yes. can assess a situation, um, which uses creativity. You can find out things about what's going on. You can ask some specific questions. Some uh, playbooks let you ask extra questions if you choose like those abilities. And mine. Yeah, <laughs> but different extra. But questions. different, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> different things. I didn't make info boxes for these, and I'm sad. Oh no. That's okay. So assess the situation. There, you can plead with an NPC. Uh, 
idea well not ideally someone who cares what you think not ideally you have to you no that's what i mean sorry that's not ideal on somebody yeah. who doesn't care yeah right specifically. yeah so you can plead for their help or support or for them to take an action yep uh you can help you can uh help a companion uh which costs some fatigue and you give them a plus one to their role that one's simple mm-hmm. very simple but not in combat Right, important. You can rely on your skills and training, which is a really broad move that kind of encompasses, well, anything that would require you to have skill or having had to train in that. Um, yeah. Yeah, sort of the catch all this is typically when you're like, oh, I'm getting like air buttoned, like a cushion of air so that my friend doesn't hit the ground too heavy. That would usually be something like that mm-hmm. if, if it was narratively relevant to bother. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna take. <laughs> I don't want to bother cook. letting you cushion no, someone's no, no. fall. I really want to see somebody just like just pancake on the sidewalk. Can we all? If it's the outcome isn't uncertain, you don't roll. It just yeah, happens it, it, or it doesn't happen specifically. For sure. um, you can push your luck. Um, pushing your luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You negotiate with the you. You know you you t- talk with GM about what you're trying to accomplish, and they tell you what the outcomes are gonna be. Mm-hmm. Whether or not they're setbacks. You can intimidate, which is again what it it's you can intimidate an NPC specifically. Mm-hmm. Um it's that's what it says on the tin. Uh, but uh, they they have specific responses mm-hmm. to what that is. And if you do really well you can eliminate one of the things that they can do in a response to being intimidated. Really cool. Cool mechanic. In fact, why don't we just throw that out there? You wanna show your dice? Oh, yeah. It's two D six. Oh. It's all the players have, and they each have dice that have little symbols based on their uh, their chosen Eww. disciplines. Love a good dice. Um, but uh, they're really just a, it's they're just two six sided dice, the standard dice that you would find in board Shit. games. Look at them roll. They also have four um, stats. Oh, stats. Harmony, creativity, mm-hmm. focus, and. Passion. <laughs> yes. yeah. And with those, typically a move will ask for somebody to roll with one of these stats. So, for instance, if you were relying on your skills and training, that would be roll with focus. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you would roll your 2d6 and you would add or subtract your stat because your stat could be minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, and in some very rare cases, plus three. If you succeed, um, that's that means that you've rolled a seven or above. Yeah. However, if you roll a ten or above, then you succeed beyond just a standard success. Yeah. So, like in some cases, a seven, eight, or a nine might be success, but with some complication to it, um, or it might mean that you get a basic success. But if you roll a ten, eleven, or twelve, or higher then that means that you get an additional benefit from it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the help is, what's interesting is that the help move is done after the roll. Yeah. So if somebody rolls and they roll a six, you can then use the help move, which will cost you some fatigue, but you know that you're putting them up one threshold of success. Uh, remaining moves are guide and comfort. Um, which uh, typically uh, clears fatigue or helps them with their balance. Um, you know, you have a nice chat. Yeah, maybe make them some tea. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, or you know, clap on the back and a yeah. buck up. I mean, maybe not buck you up. You could do a shouting thing again in in that section. Iroh does yell yeah. at uh, Zuko. That's right. Yeah. Um, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it gets through them, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then finally, the basic move of trick and specifically tricking an NPC. Uh, do they fall for it? Do, you, do they fall for your trick or not? And uh, you essentially get bonuses against them in the future. And that's a creativity roll. Yeah. Oh, right. Hi, Hope. What are your characters, <laughs> like what's your character really good at and not so good at in terms of your stats? Oh. Uh, my character is very good at passion. Ah, passion. Passione. Exactly. Passione is still passione. Which would figure into things like pushing your luck or intimidating. 
And in some cases, some other. Yeah, yeah. And, and there are other like more specialized moves that you might see on your playbook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's focus. So among the basic moves, the one that jumps out is relying on your skills and training. I was looking at the types of things that I often want to do and bought up my zero. So I'm not, I'm equally mediocre at everything, but I'm very bad at harmony. Okay. Oh shit. Am I also bad? Okay, no, good, good. Well, so w wait a minute, you don't have- I have one, one, minus one, one. I bought my zero up to a one. Oh wow. That's because good. specifically, I feel like I'm going to be doing more defending and maneuvering. If which uses focus. My focus was at a zero. It's not not too harmonious there for you. No. <laughs> not it's too okay. harmonious. What moves rely on harmony specifically? Um, guide and comfort. Yeah. yeah. Not gonna be a whole lot of. Those. I got one. Creativity. Harmony. I got. Uh, I also have a zero. <laughs> yeah. No. I think it's gonna be you. I'll just be serving all of you tea and Shit. sandwiches and. But zero. Like a zero modifier just yeah. means that you have a 50-50 shot yeah. of succeeding also the thing. Also bleeding. <laughs> bleeding. Ooh. You have a better than 50-50 shot. Because of help. No, yeah. well, partially oh. that, but also oh, because a more. seven is a success. Right. Stats off. Yes. I just run. Oh my god. I feel like my character would be really good at bleeding. I'm honestly like as much as... we're gonna look at this. Look, this is session zero, so maybe I'll come back with a completely different playbook because... Uh, I know, I know what, that, that was something that I found interesting in trying to choose a playbook was because it doesn't change what you can actually accomplish. It just gives you a little bit of strengths and a bit of flavor on them. Um, mm. Yeah, like. Yeah, you're not locked into yeah, your playbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like I know a core of what I want my character to be. Mm. So it's just yeah. figuring out which playbook best. The only best. things that you can't do is you can't be an icon or a hammer. Correct. Right. So sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but for now, I'm a rogue. Can the icon use a hammer? Yes. Maybe I'm not as good at pleading as I think I am. I try and I suck at it. <laughs> there are there 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 is a grace period, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first three sessions, if there's anything that you want to change, then you are allowed to without any penalty. Um, but the interesting thing here, I think, is that if you change your playbook. Um, you're right. If it's still at the beginning of the game, it doesn't change a ton. It does change your balance principles. Yeah, I know. So there is that. It changes a lot. Like it's a lot of the flavor of what your character is does come from the playbooks. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. There's some really interesting character creation questions that, yeah, they're sort of like role playing games if you aren't used to them. But I actually found them really useful even as an experienced role player. Yeah. Kate has her fingers on the Asami page, which well, oh, I mean, can I mean, you I blame mean. her? I mean. Look at that. They were like, we need some Asami art. They were like, make it two pages. I know when I was rolling up my character, I had no idea what I wanted to do until I read through with Scott all of the playbooks and kind of narrowed down which ones jumped out at me. And then gradually one of them started sort of creating a character. But like, that's what it, that's what it took. But again, that's, but, but they were really. I think that's what I mean, though. And like, and I'm, this isn't this isn't a, a, a slight against any other system at all, because we've had a great amount of success playing in storyteller systems and you know exalted and so on and so forth. But like, often you're often it is suggested to kind of create your character concept and then to fit it into various splats, be it, you know, uh, species or class or whatever. Whereas here, the, the playbooks offer you, they offer you the beginning of your story yeah. rather than the other way around. And in some ways, the end of your story yeah, too. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's fair. Because they're like, if you tick these boxes, then your character has kind of like, reached Resolved. the end yeah, of their their yeah. arc their, yeah. their 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 character journey which is like which is really cool yeah that moment of bets. I'll, I'll take those bets roger twy i will administer those bets ultimately the that these are not the hammer <laughs> these are not the hammer <laughs> these these yeah many <laughs> all right go for it so oh, please <laughs> the other thing that i'm going to point out is that we do have these cards Hey, I'm going to say that all the time. Combat yeah. is done in an interesting way in that if the combat isn't terribly consequential, it's just a single roll. It's uh, it's you know relying on your skills or training or pushing your luck, or if you can find another way to do it, you find another way to do it. You just roll once, you move on. 
But if it's combat against a significant opponent and the details of the combat become interesting, then we do have options for how the combat is supposed to go. It seems a little complicated at first. However, it does end up being um, a lot easier once you actually kind of understand what's going on. So when you're starting combat, first, we got to actually figure out who's fighting and where, but then we can move on to the various different steps of combat uh, that show, for instance, first, for every NPC, I secretly choose, and I have these cards, which will let me, right now it's Azula on, because, you know, nice, why not? Um, I choose either advance and attack, defend and maneuver, or evade and observe. And the players will also choose, although they can do so openly, and they're allowed to communicate with each other. Let's, let's fuck them up. <laughs> 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 then, fuck them up. Yeah. after that, once we've resolved, then each of those maneuvers are, are done in turn, and it's the roles that determine how many of these we actually get to use. But we don't roll for each individual move. Mm -hmm. Moves succeed. It's just a question of how many do you get zero one maybe two mm -hmm. or is it going to cost you fatigue in order to use them so you would roll based on your approach and your approach also determines what you can do things like changing the battlefield to your advantage well that's actually more of a defendant maneuver than anything else even though you might think that it's an aggressive act you have to choose defend and maneuver in order to do it if you're trying to figure stuff out it's probably going to be more of an evade and observe. And as we move through the rest of combat, there's also certain statuses that can be applied. There are eight in the game. The statuses can be positive Love or negative. Um, the statuses can be prepared. For instance, if you have uh, gotten yourself ready for a specific thing, prepared can help you out for one role. Uh, inspired, you know, these three like to make their speeches every once in a while. Maybe they'll be able to um, be inspired. You're ready to stand for something so that you can even shift your balance at your choice. You can be empowered. Your abilities are naturally stronger in this moment. Think of like a waterbender fighting under the full moon or a firebender with a once in a generation <laughs> comment. Hey, <laughs> kind of got hose there. Yeah. Uh, but there are other ways to gain empowered other than that. Uh, and favor, where you're just, you're just oh. made, something is made easier based on the circumstances around you. But then equally, you could find yourself stunned, trapped, impaired, or even doomed, <gasps> uh, which would then inflict penalties on what you're able to do, or even fatigue and conditions. Firebender on an active volcano would absolutely be empowered, yes. Mm -hmm. Keep that impaired card ready. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Doomed. <laughs> uh, these cards were, uh, I believe, a product that's like, you know, uh, associated with the game, and yeah, they are so glad we got them. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I, I should As say. are our dice. As are the dice, and they are fucking nice. <laughs> Stunner. <laughs> Stunner. Yeah. Oh, oh God. God. Oh yeah. Fox. Combat. Um, Combat action hey. decks. Combat. So one deck has plenty for, I think, five players and the storyteller sort of thing. So six there's players, Six I think. players? So there's there's plenty of copies for your gaming table. You just need to buy the one box. Same thing with the dice. They have one set of each element slash fighting style. So Can I also six. say how much I love that? Yeah. Like, when you said, which ones should we get? I was yeah. like, well, I guess we should get one for each of us. And you were like, no, no. One pack covers all. And I was like. Do oh, we buy it? Yeah, it's like, do we buy it or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. how like surprising of this company. Like, I yeah. would expect them to be like, you have to buy five of these if yeah. you want each of your players to have, yeah. you know? Even if it was like five bucks per set of dice to have to like pick them up separately. Oh yeah. my still God, be like, so I don't annoying, know. Yeah. Whereas it's like, you know, a set price for the full set. It's just yeah. so great. Yeah. So I'm so delighted. Surprise. Do you mean. The uh, <laughs> uh, you get multiples in a set just like if you order the, our safety cards. Uh, yeah, uh, our safety cards will come in a set for five, 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 that makes five, sense five sets. Five sets in one instruction card. 
Yeah, so that would usually be four players and a storyteller because the story player has story player. Storyteller is a player too. Mm-hmm. But we don't, you know, there's no judgment here about the size of your table. It's how you use it. <laughs> Can we, should we write that? We should write that. I'm gonna write that. I guess we can always make, like, if we really wanted to, we could make another size deck if people are like, but I yeah. have six people. Like, we could look into that. Although, if you're ordering from drive through cards, I think that one set costs, like, literally $2. Yeah. So maybe just buy two. Like, yeah. I, the shipping is the, <laughs> the shipping thing. will be the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, the shipping is where you'll get no, nailed for that. But also, just <laughs> order more things from drive through cards. Get some VTES. Who knows? Um, I, okay, so with our characters out of the way, with the mechanics out of the way, uh, my question then goes to what do you hope to see in this kind of game? What, what are some things that you're hoping? Now, this could be uh, a kind of a scene that you'd like to see. I would love to have a battle on top of an active volcano so that Aragorn could be like, Aragorn and I love volcanoes. And Aragorn can also be, you know, come in on an airship. Like, imagine in her mind she's coming in on an airship and, <laughs> you know, whatever. No. Uh, it could be uh, themes. It could be uh, 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 just a thing you want your character to do at some point. Mm. But is there anything that you're really hoping to see that you're, like, super airship into a volcano and save the world? <laughs> That's the end of the campaign. Just the three of you just like dive bombing your airship into a. Uh, I hope this works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and then the stream ends. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's it. Um, if there are memes that you want to see. Wow. Cabbage Park my, is canon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> memes I want to see include uh, my girlfriend turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. Uh, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> that's what I want to see. That's rough, buddy. <sighs> So good. Uh, we have I mean, different... we've got moons. You, you actually have moons on your right now. I sure do. We have a different uh, card provider for outside of the US. Don't worry. Not to worry uh, about it. But... Or you can print your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bear Lafant. Get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bearable with a big trunk, right? Yeah. So, yeah I'm going right. to say two things. Yeah. So, since nice. No one else has jumped in yet. No, no, please, uh, no. I want um, there to be moments where um, we solve a problem that is big for a small group of people, whether that's like a small town or, you know, a, a little, like, a family or something like that, but like a not, you know, oh, you know, the world's gonna end tomorrow kind of thing. But like, yeah, big problem for a small group. Big problem, small scope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I want um, sometimes some hilarious hijinks, like, I don't know. The cactus episode. Uh, <laughs> uh, you want to be the quenchiest. Uh, well, not necessarily something Quenchy. as uh, ridiculous as the cactus episode, but I, I guess what I'm saying is that I, as much as I love the big scale of things, I'm open to there being like a big overarching goal. I also feel like it's something that I've enjoyed in our campaigns when we have these smaller scope, one or two episode sort of arcs. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I'll throw in a couple of things as well. Something that we have, I think, discussed many times, probably on stream and off. The idea of uh, the idea of a home, or at least a home base, is interesting. Whether or not that can travel is different. It is, is you know, we'd have to decide and see where we kind of land on that. But it feels like a nice. It feels like the ability to have the PCs be able to go somewhere and be like, we're we're resting here, we're resetting, maybe we're interacting with specific NPCs that we want to see more of, you know. We love to collect NPCs for romances in, on this stream, so. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to see, um, I, I want to see a chase. I, lo I love yeah. a chase. I mean, you like I, chase? there's a lot of good action there, stuff, so I love a chase. You can either choose to have a chase or a gala, but you can't have both. No! Bullshit. Chase through the gala. <laughs> I'm running this game a now. A chase directly through the gala. Yes. Both gala. hands just flying. Yeah. I would, I would, okay, that's, no, that's good. Yeah, if we can't have a gala, I want to chase through a gala. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote high janks. <laughs> um, it good. seems like each of our PCs has, um, individual struggles that are maybe 
even more clearly defined than they normally are at the beginning of the game. Mm. And I'm really excited to have um, spotlights on each of those struggles. So not not all things that the three of us are dealing with together, but also yeah. things that each of us are dealing with individually and not like, oh, we have to constantly split the party, but every so often having those like slice of life, like what are, what are the struggles that, that our friends can't necessarily help us with, um, but that are still very much present in our balance. Yeah, uh, so you want like a Tales of Bossing say. Sort of, yeah, every every so often, yeah, because I'm like thinking back to the campaigns and it's all been very much like the three of us have to ally to, to, to handle this. Um, but what happens when we go back to where we're staying that night if it's separate? And like, what are we dealing with in those moments too? Yeah, like I think just to, to tack onto that to be more explicit about it. Thank Playbooks, <laughs> no, 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 I just think it's important. The playbook, in addition to having your two principles that you are struggling to kind of keep in balance, um, there's also an element that you, the player, need to define because it's, it's at the core of what your playbook is about. As an example, um, the hammer needs an adversary because the hammer is struggling to figure out what can you deal with, uh, what can you do with force, and what can you not do with force. Um, and so having an adversary is like key to that. So you have to name your adversary. What do you want to do to them? If you defeat your adversary, if you fight your adversary, you get bonuses, you know, that's just, that's my playbook. John and, and I had to come up with a full like order and tradition <laughs> <laughs> that my like character is a part of. Mm -hmm. And so I just, awesome. like if we're talking about, you know, all of us, looking at spotlighting yeah. one PC struggle, they're kind of defined from the beginning. They that's have it. to be, which is nice. I guess that's what I'm saying is I'm excited to play those. Mm -hmm. um, because while we're gonna have these overarching quests or even these smaller uh, struggles that we're dealing with, there's also the individual struggles um, that the game kind of insists that we pay attention to in a good way. Yeah. I'm stoked. Uh, and and uh, some dramatic scene in the rain. Oh. A dramatic scene in the rain. Because huh? none of us I are waterbenders, so it's just gonna be rain. <laughs> Unless we're sucking face on a, with a waterbender. What? Sucking face? I just sorry, I haven't heard that expression in so long. It's. I'm definitely gonna put a label on the table that just says Maine. <laughs> nice. And that, honestly, oh, yeah. this is yeah, yeah. This yeah. is this is fair. Uh, <laughs> um, sucking face in the rain. You know, I'm not gonna. So that uh, then, I guess I suppose to, um, I, I guess I have to ask. If you were to choose a romantic partner, you would want it to be a waterbender? Not necessarily. Yeah. We leave our options open. I Never know like what I, John's gonna throw at us. I, mean, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like we could go, this track could go on forever, but I am yeah. gonna start it, whether or not we wanna go Here down we go. there. An earthbender could create a surface wherever you needed one. Just saying. Don't take As my ideas. <laughs> Give me my sexy ideas. Oh, my ideas! <laughs> my friends! Yeah, like, what are you gonna do? Three section them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, holy shit! <laughs> don't start, don't start something. Don't start something. <laughs> Famously, that is actually Classic the hammer's Yonsu. problem, is yeah. not being able to finish. Oh, God. <laughs> oh it's Classic already begun. Yonsu. Fuck you. Time. You just self owned, I love it. Water oh, under man. wouldn't need a surface. No. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You have to be focused, though. Yeah, but like... You, like, to a certain extent, you have to be... You know, it's good that we've around. started this in Session Zero. So that's... That's, this is the game we're playing. Yeah. Welcome. The game we want to play. Welcome you ever been driven to people. orgasm by someone doing Tai Chi? Because <laughs> that's what's possible. Look, they know how to get someone wet. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the Exa obvious Again, it was no right there. Yeah. No, no, please, get in there. So... I'll blow you away. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Again. Okay. Would you need like a, you need a button for that or? <laughs> Just a little M, honestly. Yes. Peggy 18. <laughs> Peggy 18. <laughs> so good. Oh boy. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what kind of romance will come out of this. Yeah. Like, mm. There's that. And by romance, I don't necessarily mean romance. It could just be like, you know. Intimacy. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm curious to see how the three of you will will mold together. Yeah. Same. Oh. 
sorry, that's something we haven't talked about. I don't know if we want to necessarily. I think it would, well, it would be part of a session zero. My segue just got fucking interrupted. Scott was gonna talk about the pizza he's gonna eat. Segway after interrupt us. Segway interrupt us. He was gonna talk about Shit, man, something I'm sorry. else. I'll be right back. Famously, segways can't handle We've rough ordered terrain very pizza, well. pizza. They have non-dairy cheese. You fucked my segue <laughs> so bad. harder <laughs> than Young Sue with his three sections. Whatever, there's a it's it's there. Someone take it. Bye. <laughs> exactly. I you know what I have you know what I appreciate? Appreciate Cyphus says Kate exits stage left and is correct. And is correct. That's right. From from this point of view, out that way, it's you all haven't even uttered a single a singer word in character. In character, I've already ruined and we're John's already life. Making fun of that. Well, that's, that's sorry. That's just me, and I've ruined your life. Yeah, John, what, what were you gonna? What, I was just gonna say, do you actually know? Because <laughs> Snuffleupagus came up here. Yes. People were talking about um, this one does. Uh, a bearfant. Right. Do you know what Snuffleupagus's name is? Bernice. That's a. That's a really good guess, actually. Sorry, that sounds right. Because, I don't know. Because Snuffleupagus is actually Mr. Snuffleupagus. Oh, damn. So not Bernice. And he Bernard. does have a first name. Oh, damn. I feel like it would be something relatively... Booger. No, like, I think it's going to be something relatively like ma like mainstream. Like Bernard. But I don't know. Kate, do you know Snuffleupagus's first name? Not offhand. Brandonson. Aloysius. Oh, well, I was wrong. Al Al Aloysius or Aloysius? It's probably Aloysius. Yeah. Alo oh. Aloysius. Feel free to talk behind Yeah. Sorry about your Hi, Scott. Aloysius. Hi, Scott. Um, is, is his real name? I had to look it up. Why did you look it up and when? Because people were talking about Snuffleupagus in chat. So you just looked it up now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I knew what it, it was. <laughs> nice. Was. I can't even pronounce the goddamn name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right either. <laughs> it is a good quiz question. Mm -hmm. Everyone scrub your brains. The cast is like, Kate, come join us for trivia. I'm like, no, I'm going to my session zero. And one person was like, nice. And I was like, yes. Which Who? Was Simon. Of course it was Simon. He plays D&D and or DMs, whatever. Yep. Oh, did I just get discorded? I just Ooh, got discorded. discorded. I don't know Should why I'm know. checking. Like, I'm somehow yeah, privy to John's like, Ooh, DMs. Discord. Mr. Snuffleupagus has a has quite the past, because also originally... Oh. In, <laughs> originally in Sesame Street, Snuffleupagus uh, couldn't be seen by anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and then Buffy St. Marie... A folk singer who's oh yeah, yeah. Bu Buffy Saint Marie who used to be on Sesame Street could almost see him, hmm. but then after the events of Follow That Bird, the motion picture, uh, they decided to reveal Snuffleupagus because they didn't want children to not tell their parents about things, thinking they wouldn't be believed. Huh. So sweet. Children's Television Workshop, man. That's yeah. Fun. Um, also, everyone should go to the random room because uh, oh, Axamo's dinner girl. looks fucking delicious. Uh, I was just thinking of the John channel, which has... What the agenda. absolute fuck, <laughs> I love it. What is this but Look at Paximo's dinner. I haven't gotten there. Random room. It's a panda No, but my loading I was just, I was just <gasps> posting so fantasy erotica good. TikToks, so don't worry about that. Kumazoo. Or do worry <laughs> later. Kumazoo so is the name? Thinking. All right. Oh, Sesame Street lore goes hard. Sesame Street has been around longer than most of you have been alive. Longer than we've been alive. Sesame Street should rule the world. Don't know if it's been around longer than... I think it's been I thought it started in the 70s. I think so. And John was born in 42. Uh, um. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, uh. That makes him older than my mom. That's really <laughs> Sesame Street has 53 seasons. seasons. It premiered in 1969, so yes, it, it's been around longer than me. Wow. Um, can you tell me how many episodes... Crazy. We're just... Because Scott wasn't here. Oh, thank you. How many episodes, <laughs> closest without going over, 
How many episodes has Sesame Street had? How many episodes? Yeah, how many episodes has there been of Sesame Street? Sesame Street specifically. I'm not talking about Sesame Park wow. or right the various other like mm. Sesame Street, the show. How many episodes closest to that going over? I don't know if they air new episodes. Mm-hmm. I can't math fast. To be honest, but Elizabeth. I, I tap out. 550. I honestly have no idea. Um, 1,500. Yeah. 4,633. <laughs> oh, God damn. Over 9,000. Over 9,000. All right. Segwas interrupt Segwas us complete. Complete us. Um, we were back. going to talk about um, Johnson. something to do with yes. how our characters Speaking of Go ahead. Why don't you say, You go ahead. No, because I'm just trying to drive really force the train back on the tracks here. The trains are back on the tracks. Everybody should remember Mr. Hooper. Um, so the the key here is that during the game setup, we had to determine um, what the focus was uh, and the scope. So we're starting in Republic City and the scope is in fact Republic City Plus because the three of you said that you wanted the ability to have a home, but also not just remain in one place all the time. So the idea isn't necessarily that you will be constantly hopping to new locations, that it's a world spanning game, at least not in the first season, because this game actually does divide itself into seasons. Um, But that you start in Republic City itself, uh, and then uh, you have the option of going to other places. Perhaps you would like to go to the Southern Spirit Portal. <laughs> Whoa. Or perhaps you would enjoy... Honestly. Is John a travel agent for this <laughs> Perhaps you would inv- enjoy visiting the Western Air Temple? Oh. <laughs> you don't need to tap, like, the, you can just hit the cities. Or perhaps you... Yeah, I know. I pushed the wrong button. Perhaps you want to go to Ember Island. <laughs> yes, oh, always. Always. Can our home base be on Ember Island? That's... Yeah, no. Well, I yes, think it can be, but now we're changing <laughs> the whole story. fucking no, thing. No, no, we can save up for real estate. Uh, <laughs> Spoken wheel, like doing away missions from DS9. Well said. Nice. Yeah. We're going to buy out the Ember Island players. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. They'll only put on shows that Young Sue writes. It's a different character, different game. Very different. So, yeah, thanks to me. the wonderful structure of this game, when mm. it comes to creating your story, answering these questions, once we determine those things, it also established how our characters know one another. Yay. Which is really fucking cool. Because, in fact, you've already had a thing mm-hmm. happen yeah. to you. A pilot episode is, a, I think, how they describe it, which is very cool. Which, again, like, you know, Meta narrative wise, it's important, it, it, especially if it's a relatively new group of role players. You don't want to just be like, So, what do you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this way you're establishing things, but you're not yet role playing. You're making but, choices about how you how you've met. We're experienced role players, yeah, and yeah. we've still fucked this up. Uh, this is correct, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's fair. Yeah, we outline the inciting incident. You create three acts to this incident story. So sweet. Um, you know, uh, a befriending or a discovery or doing something, something turns. We did an action, and then oh. as a repercussion, we just managed to complete that thing. Yes. <laughs> Very vague, broad strokes. I'm not getting to all of the specifics, but we chose those things. Mm-hmm. Over the course of the coming week, we're actually going to be posting some of this stuff on Discord. Nice. Perfect. So, mm. to, uh, yes. to help maintain some, to get some hype. hype. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some but hypo. <laughs> ultimately, that means that our characters at least know each other well enough to have had an episode of a TV show together, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah, 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 exactly. And a future goal. You all yeah. have your own individual yes. goals, but a future goal. So there's only a few other things that we got to resolve. The first is y'all have to make sure that you have a secret for your characters. This is not part of the book. This is my dumbass asking for it. Smart. So you need to have a secret. The secret can be whatever you choose it to be. It can be earth shattering or earth shattering, I suppose would be more Liz's thing than uh, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> secret okay, tunnel. tunnel. Uh, it can be earth shattering, it can be comedic, it can be dramatic, it can be whatever you choose. The only things that I ask is that you clear it with me first and that you don't tell the other players of the audience yet. It can reveal itself in game. Uh, it's just, I find it's useful to have one thing that you can keep in reserve for yourself. Because in fact, as we've been creating our characters, it's been open among all of us. Mm -hmm. So that will, that will help. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna want you to do is just think about where you want your characters perhaps to go. Um, not just in terms of like together as a group, but part of Avatar is your ability to learn and grow as, as it goes forward. Um, for instance, there are techniques that are rare that are available in these games. If your character starts with a rare technique, we need to know why. It's not necessarily a no. In fact, I don't see a reason why I wouldn't give it to you, but a rare technique would be a question mark and that might affect some things for you. So it's more because a rare technique is something that has to have been taught by a very specific person or an extraordinary circumstance in which you learned it on your own. Right. Like Toph figuring out metal bending from within a, a metallic chamber, right? Toph's the best. I'm not mad that Maya Cabbages and Zeke, Zeke Rhett, Rhett Tunnel <laughs> aren't starting PCs. Well, I well, what about my NPCs? I gotta have yeah, some Aragorn. fun, Aragorn. John needs all the best names. Yeah. Especially when this it's a one-off character and we say, what's your name? And John has to come up with one real fast. Now he has an option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we, then we kidnap Zeke you and give Zeke. Them to me. You offer them to me freely. I do not deny that my heart has greatly desired this. Oh my god. No, no. Okay, fair. We all know In exchange for a Kumazu. <gasps> hmm. Interesting. Uh, so these are things to think about as well. So where is your character going? Mm -hmm. You have two principles that your character is currently torn between. It's important to note that at this stage of the game, your character must be torn. So you can't have picked a playbook where you're like, well, I know I'm gonna end up on this end because then what's the point? Uh, so it is also important to think about what either of these principles mean to you because it matters more for that than necessary. So for instance, Elizabeth's character has the principles of role versus freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't mean that she is um, an indentured servant, <laughs> oh but freedom does mean something specific. So it's important for you to know what that means versus why is your role important and why would it be something that you would want to maintain or keep. John, would you like in the coming week for me to post the info that we solidified about the order on Discord? Yeah. Like, would that be helpful? Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Just because then we can confirm it. I yeah. didn't. I just didn't want to be like, surprise, we're all doing this now because we are at different stages with the three of you. Mm -hmm. for those. Exactly. So okay. I didn't want to. Ooh, my days off are tomorrow and Tuesday. That's there when I'm going to finish it. Yes. So that And play StarCraft. Apparently. So that viewers oh, can go in with a certain amount of knowledge that we don't have to like expose it in game, but also mm -hmm. um, we all have context. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Cool. Uh, and then finally, <laughs> the thing that I want you to think about is that I asked for things that you wanted to see. So we have things like, uh, we want to make sure that we have uh, solve big problems with small scopes. We want uh, scenes, dramatic scenes in the rain, a chase. Uh, we want the ability to have uh, some slice of life, but also the ability to have some wacky hijinks as well. These are all important, but if there's anything else that you think of, throw them out there because mm -hmm. While I'm not going to necessarily say, well, these are all checkboxes that I must check off, uh, knowing that they are wanted, especially if you say it and then the other two players are like, oh yeah, then that's useful for me to know. Both Kool-Aid man through your apartment front door as Kate's saying something to you, yeah. So I've been playing a whole bunch of Diablo recently <laughs> and I have a potion, which is like the potion of cool, K-U-L-L-E dash, um, a-I-Y-D or something oh like that. Oh my god. And That's if ridiculous. you drink it, it restores your health. But it also means you can break through walls. <laughs> oh my god. That's kind of awesome, actually. Like eight yeah. seconds. That's pretty I love amazing. it. Um, yeah. I don't want to play Diablo with John. Shit. You might not. I 
I, I played the most recent really fucking hard. Yeah. I was watching you and like, I couldn't even register what was happening. It was just a blur of yeah. death I, I, <laughs> destruction. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't. I would love to play with people. Just understand that I have, um, I've leveled things up considerably. Now I may end up making a new character but we'll see. Uh, we also have to see because if I'm enjoying Diablo 3 right now, maybe it means that I'll be enjoying Diablo 4 and then maybe I should pre-order it so that I can stream the open beta. Oh, she We'll see if there's interest. We'll see if there's interest. If there's interest on Discord, then I will. Um, but uh, beyond that, now I'm going to open this up for questions, not just from the three of you, but also from all of you. Uh, if there's anything that you have to ask about the system, about the setting, or if there's anything that you want to see, I'm kind of game. And while I'm waiting for questions to come in uh, from all of you, I'm also going to point one thing out. I don't have dice. In this system, the storyteller does not roll. I make moves if they make sense in terms of the fiction, but... I don't actually have to roll anything. Um, if anything, if what I do is in doubt, a player rolls instead. So interesting. How do you feel about that? I'm I mean, it's the system. To see how it'll but... go because one of the things is I tend to. I mean, I'll roll dice in terms of like the tactical combat, right? Because one thing that we have to admit is that in a lot of role-playing games, not all of them, but in a lot of them, there's sort of like the role-playing part, and then there's the tactics, the mechanics part. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the mechanics part relies on me rolling dice, and I'm very happy to do that. Yeah, for sure. But I don't like rolling dice unless I want there to be chance. So mm -hmm. there's something that's kind of interesting to me about, nah, if I want something to happen, it just does. Because it's also a little weird sometimes if you're like, the villain's like, ha, 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 and then, like, chonks down the, like, the big fucking lever so that they can turn on the doomsday device. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I guess I'll roll to see if they built the doomsday dice correctly. Oh, they didn't. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, Just fizzles out. Yeah. I, oh. I don't need the random chance. Mm hmm um, the random chance for me comes from you and not just from your dice, but also what your actions are because you're the protagonists of the story. So I'm always going to focus more on what you are doing than on what I intend. Mm. So I don't need the dice. So I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Uh, yeah. Avatar of Kane is a question. Yep. What was it about Republic City and perhaps specifically post Cora RC that attracted you all to pick it as a central location? Um, I think uh, at least part of it was just that then there were basically no restrictions as to what kind of characters we could create. Um, uh, there could be airbenders because we are in a, a period of time where airbending is a thing. Um, there's a there's, whole bunch of people who live in Republic City and it gave us a lot of options. There isn't a nation that currently is yeah. at war with mm -hmm. the rest of the world and therefore it makes it difficult if you want to play, for instance, someone from the Fire Nation. Um, yeah, it left open the option of things like metal bending or lightning bending. Things that like either didn't exist or barely existed that are a little bit more prevalent uh, in the Korra era um, that were interesting. A lot of technology was neat, I think, was part of it. We were mm -hmm. like, ooh, we could have an airship if we wanted. Yeah. Not have to rely on somehow shoehorning our way into having a sky bison. There was a cool blend of like... Uh, hyper advanced tech mm -hmm. and super traditionalist ideals. Yeah. So like my character, for example, is going to be very steeped in, in tradition, but then other PCs could have this like advancement in tech and it wouldn't seem, it wouldn't seem off in Republic City. Also this way I get to do the recaps as uh, Oh shit. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can the three defeat their <laughs> opponent? <laughs> Find our duck, stop. Yeah, actually, we may just have to take turns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, to shout out this book yet again, um, each aura, aura, each era <laughs> has a page that mentions significant themes, and it gives you six significant themes for the era, which is another thing that we did look at as we were like confirming our choice. There's like, uh, I don't know, six or eight pages per era, just about the setting. What what are some of the big 
um, players and thing, events going on in the world, but it's also, yeah, these are bits of information about, like, the Roku era is about testing alliances, propaganda and secrets, resources and industrialization, connection versus isolation, internal conflicts versus external problems. So that also, like, it isn't the kind of granular detail that you get in some systems where it's like, okay, if you're in this city, like in this country, this region, this city, this is like the name of the mayor and like mm -hmm. what's happening. But there's still some really nice things that are like, yeah, if you know about it, it would be kind of obvious that the Hundred Year War, one of the significant themes would probably be the brutality of war and colonization and process in progress like right these are things that are happening in the story but it's nice to know that these like to have that sort of offer of these are some of the themes so would you be interested in exploring mm -hmm. them if you played this era well that's exactly what we did in one of our pre-sessions right yeah. was we kind of listed all the themes out loud and if there were any themes that didn't particularly appeal to us that could completely uh remove one of the eras from consideration mm -hmm. Uh, so that might be helpful with your own great gaming group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Honestly, when we were looking at it, there was also a point where we were we were realizing that none of us had very strong inclinations for or against any of the eras. Yeah. So it did eventually kind of come down to this one keeps our options open. Mm -hmm. There's something that's kind of interesting, which is I don't know if the if the story sort of supports this, but that. The th interesting thing is also, if you're from a certain nation, it's almost assumed that if you're a bender, you're going to be a bender of that nation. Right. And mm. it's possible that you're not. It is possible, but the show never gets terribly in depth about like, is it genetic? Yeah. Is it based on where you're born? Is it random chance? And yeah. Like, because, you know, Haru, for instance, um, is an earthbender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was born in the Earth Kingdom to an Earthbender father. Okay, all of that makes sense. Sure. But then Hama, Waterbender, taken from the uh, Southern Water Tribe, lives in the Fire Nation now. Yeah. Stays in the Fire Nation. I, I we from have what a I... misprint. Sorry. Oh, a misprint. Yeah. So we have page uh, up to page sixty-four, and then it repeats from page forty-nine to sixty-four, and then it jumps to eighty-one. Oh, damn. Hmm. Interesting. We should. We should them contact them. Yeah. yeah. There's also. Um, if you need to wrap anything, Kate, grab book. Oh yeah. If you oh want. no no no! Okay. It was just specifically that's where the era of Korra and I was like. So we just have yeah. a repeat of. Of the Hundred Years War era. So it was a really so that's Goku important. and Hundred Year War. Like we so have that's that why twice. that's why the genocide page keeps coming up. Keeps coming up because it's, up it's twice. twice. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably where, pages. like, yeah, the divide in the folio is or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Sablika also has a question there in case. Yep. Mm. So do you have a campaign title yet? Embarrassingly, no. Uh, I was going to think of it, and then I realized I didn't want to make one up without talking to the other players, and uh, yeah, we'll figure it out this week. <laughs> this is our first um, campaign in this system, so, you know, we, we had a naming system for other games, other campaigns based on the world that they were set in, but we're not locked into that necessarily we don't have to be well, so the specific question is whether we had a campaign title we've right. always had that no no i know but like we don't have um we don't have nomenclature for it yet because exalt which was always exalt which colon blah. you know what i mean like we can do what we want technically the our first campaign was exalt Exalt which and right. we didn't have a subtitle we added was, that uh, retroactively because we, we had a second exalt which campaign exactly and then if we run exalted again we'll probably do it again mm -hmm. rock on branding branding is important like arcade games in Space Race. Oh, sick. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Space Race. I, I like the idea That's that wild. like to get to space, they just jam a whole bunch of firebenders <laughs> at the bottom and they're like, aim down. <laughs> <laughs> and then one airbender's like, I, yeah, I'll just, you know, and it just flies up. Yeah. Avatar, the most recent. <laughs> Avatar. Exalt Twitch. Balance? Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> Balance. Yeah, Exalt Twitch changeling. The Avatar. Yeah, exactly. I'm going figure it out. The Avatar, the series, the film. Uh, I, I'll have one question for you. So we did just rewatch the series, both series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you want to highlight some moments that are like among your favorites? 
I'm gonna say Ember Island players. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Why would you wait, do wait, this wait. to me? This is an episode <laughs> near the end of, of Avatar The Last Airbender, which is a, a breath of fresh air in an otherwise relatively bleak. kind of relatively <laughs> bleak and dark kind of part of the story where they all go to a play and the play is about them and it's fucking hilarious. It's, it's so, oh my fan. God. But the show also has time in that episode to allow uh, the characters to continue their, the struggles that they have, mm -hmm. seeing their souls reflected on stage. It's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, lots of other things, but that's my first pitch. Um, so yeah, obviously these are spoilers for these seasons oh, and yeah. series, um, but there's an episode either late in season two or sometime in season three when Korra has been away, she's withdrawn for a while, uh, and it's sort of covering the fact that she did withdraw from everyone and only kept in touch with Asami. It's in season uh, four. Oh, wow. That far in. Um, and um, when she reunites with Naga, mm. just the love between like a pet that you haven't seen in a while. Mm. There was no hard feelings, right? Like, you know, when you go on a trip and you come home, you know, or mm. when you, if you have a family pet and you've moved out and you go back. Um, but also just, just the ways that they chose to explore the different facets of being apart and reuniting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In fact, she didn't talk. Uh, I got two. Um, one from Avatar, one from Korra. Avatar, it's it's uh, literally the secret tunnel. Um, <laughs> the two lovers, because it it's so funny. Yeah. But like, it really says something quite fundamental about what each of the characters are. Mm -hmm. And I just think that blend of like pee your pants laughing, wacky as hell NPCs, and like earworm songs combined with, oh my God, now I know way more about each of them and their problem solving capabilities. Mm -hmm. And also their, their, just like what their hearts want uh, than ever before. I just think it's a fucking awesome episode. Plus war torn love story. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, right? Um, and Cora, it's the remembrances episode. It, it seems like a clip show and it is in, oh, yeah. in many ways. Um, uh, they're kind of, reminiscing over a lot of like uh, the romantic drama that they've had in Korra. Um, but I think it's really telling which characters choose to confide and revisit with whom, um, because that tells a lot about where they are now. And then also they make tiny revelations between each of these flashbacks that are really telling. It's an easy episode to skip, but watching it and, and kind of like reading between the lines, you, you do uncover a lot. Uh, so I like that a lot as an episode. Can I say the Bay Fongs? Oh, oh yeah. Like, all, like, all, like just, the you know, family. just generally. The Bay Fongs. They're Bay kind Fongs. of the best. Yeah. Um, I mean, we all know. No, wait. I think I like it better this way. <laughs> oh, 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 the contemporary Bay Fongs, not the old Bay, like the mm. Avatar, Aang era. No, no, I'll, I'll, no, no. I mean, I mean them too. But yeah, yeah but in a very the, different way. Yes. They're, they're no, but, you mean? no, I just mean like uh, the character, like, the way they Toph go. is, yeah, the way Toph yeah. is dealt with over both series mm -hmm. and her children. Yeah. Also, I'm sorry, but like, the sister is Anne Hesh. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Incredible, also awesome. Incredible, because we were like, who is this? Who is sister? that sister? <laughs> yeah. And uh, and look. It's all about. For me, it's all about J.K. Simmons playing a oh. character who isn't a total dick. No, it's not nice. <laughs> it's like, oh, you can do this. Because I said the first time I was listening and watching, I was like, I don't think you're going to betray them, but. Yeah. God damn it, you're J.K. Sure? Yeah, exactly. J.K. all the while. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say, for me, um, one of my favorite, like, I have a lot of, of favorite moments, but one of the moments that stands out a bit based on what you've said. Um, I really loved the episode Tales uh, from Ba Sing Se. <laughs> <laughs> and part of that is because there's Sokka doing haiku and just getting, you know, like, you know, owned at the end of it. Sure. There's Toph and Katara going out and just basically Toph getting the chance to be kind of girly for a little bit, but then also, you know, dunking a whole bunch of girly girls <laughs> who are making fun. But it also includes um, two heart rippers, mm -hmm. right? It, it includes leaves from the vine, 
the, the song, which is just like rough. And then it also includes Momo searching for Appa. Yeah. I can't watch that episode for those reasons. Like, a, I, I, I can't. It on our we have to skip it. Um, yeah, it's strong. God, it's so heavy. And yeah. it's it's for me. The thing that I love about that that is just it sort of encapsulates that this show and therefore also this game is capable of moments of just supreme wackiness and then also moments of gut punch. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is a universe that I'm interested in playing in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, I also want to shout out then the Korra um, Asingse episode where um, Mako and Bolin meet their family. Yeah. It's such an interesting way. Like, there was a bit of, there's a, there were shades of what it was like to be in the Outer Rings in, in uh, Airbender, but this was like a direct, let's, let's meet a family that lives in it and what their life is like and the fact that you know the mom loves the queen despite how garbage their life is because of the queen is like and is so reluctant wonderful. to leave their home yeah yeah um yeah i kept expecting a horrible twist with that family i i, I, <laughs> uh, I kept fair, expecting them to be fake i kept expecting yeah. them to find out something yeah. about mako and bolin that meant they would cast them out but they never like yeah. it just didn't happen and and that was a core theme in the show. Yeah, like, you, you know, know, you're yeah. waiting for the other shoe to drop, yeah. and it didn't happen. And instead, you get other things like, oh shit, like now they, you know, they all love each other, they're all loyal to each other, and so what are they going to do? They've they've become a part of their circle, mm -hmm. their extended circle. How are they going to take care of them? Yeah, it was so good. Mm -hmm. And then if I have to pick a core thing, because it seems like we're doing both, yeah, uh, Varric. Yes. yes. So I Varric to me is a fantastic character because he is at times a villain, an ally, something in between, but I never lose the track of is this character like realistic? Because to me that's the idea of like, yep, he is a character and he has a moral code, but his moral code he's is awesome. like first and foremost, he's a business bender. <clears throat> That's his, nice. that's what he is. But we find out that even he has limits mm -hmm. in multiple places and multiple yeah. limits. And to me, that makes a fascinating character because I never truly hated him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though I definitely had reason to. And I just, I, I think he's a great thing. Yeah, and he does the thing. And by the thing, we mean Julie. So. Oh. <laughs> I was so... Uh, uh, bamboozled by the character of, I believe it was Zaheer. Yeah. In season three, by the voice acting oh. specifically, because I was like, what? Like, I was expecting something very. When you first meet him, he's. he's yeah. <laughs> I was expecting Ron He's Roman. in a cell and he's like, he's got this quiet threat. And, and I was just like, I don't know about this voice choice, y'all. But it was only many episodes later that he started um, like kind of preaching to his followers yeah. and also started exploring the more meditative aspects of his character yes. yeah. that I went, wait a minute, nice now done, yeah. it clicks. Like, and we both went, oh, okay, that's why it's that voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was really cool. Yeah, it's Henry Rollins. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, but it, and we looked it up and we were like, we were like, why guess. though? Yes, like we didn't. Yeah. Now we understand. But now, yeah, it took it took a while for that voice to settle in for both of us. Mm -hmm. Also, Zaheer... It doesn't matter. It's it's all about voice and character matching. It's Zaheer as a, as a character. Oh, also, my God. Such also good. A villain good who character. has, like, oh, I, I see what you're trying to do here. Like, Amon, yes. Zaheer, yes. I'm going to lock... <laughs> I didn't like season Less two. Chaos! Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah look. Yeah. But, like... Season two is a hump. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get over it. You know it's a great villain when somebody can come, like when they've been incarcerated yeah. and someone comes back to them quite a bit later and says, hey, the world that you thought you were making, it doesn't exist. It's actually worse because of your actions. And they seem taken aback by that. Yeah. That was a great moment mm -hmm. because he was genuinely surprised. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that, that the world he thought he had made would, just hadn't come to pass. And in fact, in many ways, it was worse. Uh, love that. Great, 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 great moment. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
season two. Folks, we're looking forward to this game. Yes. You'll be able to find more information about it on our Discord. Uh, we'll be posting throughout the week to try to maintain a certain amount of hi. hi. Um, and we're planning on starting it, but there's some things along the way. Scott? Yep. We also do other <laughs> streams throughout the week. On to yep. Uh, on to <laughs> what? On Tuesday evening, I stream on my channel. That's twitchtv slash boss at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Oh god, I'm I'm currently torn between continuing some more eagle eye mysteries or starting Dead Space. Like I don't know, I just want to. I think I want to play something spooky, guys. Um, that's a, that's quite spooky, but I'll probably put a poll up. Come join me on my part of the Discord, uh, and we can talk about all the silly in-character crap that I want to do. Maybe ten dates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll see. We'll people see. want people want it. People need that. On Wednesday, we'll see. I'm gonna try to see if I'll uh, be able to stream, and it could be Diablo, more Diablo. Hey. We've had some success with that. Could be something else. I'm still vaguely tempted to either run through all the main games in a series, whether it's Mario or Zelda or Metroid. I just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, especially because if I do Metroid, does that mean I have to play other M? <laughs> Lol. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and also, that's like, the thing. there's the prime, the, the first prime remaster, but will there be more prime remasters? Do you need to just wait another decade for them to come out? <laughs> another and decade. And which systems will they come out on if they do them? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> fine. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Thursday? Thursday? No, maybe, maybe something, maybe not. Possibly. Okay. I mean, that's that's. Thursdays are a little harder for me these days because that uh, tends to be the day that I go into the office, but we'll see if I... Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Friday, there should be something. Um, either we're going to continue God of War or I'm going to play uh, <laughs> Disney's Dreamlight Valley because I can't think of anything else and my PS5 is at my computer. So Perfecto. <laughs> that's that. Saturday? Uh, Saturday, probably Drew Crew, mm -hmm. but but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, there's a few things over the coming weekend that are a little up in the air for us, but we will Ex uh, keep, keep y'all posted. Keep people appraised, which also mm -hmm. then potentially impacts my stream at 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Uh, I play the Arkham Horror card game for spooky storytelling purposes. But again, the Discord's where to find all that information. Next Sunday, we will be back here with... No, first there will be... We have rescheduled oh. Punchy Book Club yet again. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, on Sunday, God willing, uh, yeah. at noon. Mercy issue Box number two. Praise. And then we will be back here, same time, same channel, for our first episode of our Avatar campaign. Yay. Title <laughs> Campaign title forthcoming. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, super appreciated. Uh, we have... Done a lot of talking here in our session zero, but it's to make sure that we can play the most fun game that we can possibly play coming up. Uh, but also coming up, of course, is the direction that we're gonna head. And that is, of course, this way, and then heading that way. And we will see you next time. Bye! Bye. Bye.